Hi everybody, my name is Nicole. Welcome to the Pine Cottage. Happy New Year. It is 2024 and today I'm going to talk about everything that I knit and everything that I learned about knitting in 2023. I'm going to show you everything that I have that I knit. Um, I gifted a lot of things in 2023. Um, I actually gifted 75% of what I knit in 2023. And when I was looking at the numbers, I was kind of surprised by that. I know that I gift knit a lot. And so this can kind of go two ways. Ways It can either be like, oh, wow, that's, that's a lot of gifting. Maybe I want to, you know, make it more like 50-50. But then when you look at what I knit, I mostly gift knit socks. So I feel like because they're smaller, they're an accessory, it kind of balances out the fact that I gift knit 75% of what I knit. Last year I made a goal for myself to knit one pair of socks a month for 12 pairs of socks total. And I came in at 11 pairs of socks. So I was one pair of socks short of my goal. I will kind of go through everything but out of those 11 pairs of socks i only kept two of them for myself i don't think i'm going to change how often i knit for other people when it comes to socks i'm still going to knit the same people socks each year in in 2024 but maybe i can increase the amount of socks that i knit for myself as well I don't want to put any pressure on myself to knit more things, but at the same time, I feel like each year I get a little bit more efficient with my knitting. I learn things to make it go a little bit smoother, a little bit faster. I know that vanilla sock patterns go tend to go a little bit faster for me, so I think that I will probably stick to vanilla sock patterns for my gifting. Um, and I say vanilla sock pattern, I'm not speaking of any pattern in particular. It's just my basic sock recipe that I'm speaking about. So I'll probably stick with that when I'm gifting knits. So let's just jump right into it. Um, I am, if I'm looking down, it's because I am reading out of my journal. I have a bullet, a new bullet journal for 2024. I put, and I, I don't have it in here, in my journal for 2023 that I had a page of um, similar to this where it shows everything by month that I knit. So um, it was hard for me to keep up with that because I ended up having two journals for 2023 because there were, weren't enough pages. So I did six months in the first one and six months in the second one. And I didn't create a new knitting page, so I just stopped documenting it. So I actually just went through um, my old videos, my old YouTube videos, to see what I knit. And then I just listed everything on this page so that I could do this video today. So I'm going to kind of go by category. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is a finished blanket that I knit in 2023. And I'm going to have to knock down this pile. Whoops. This is the Cozy Comfort Throw by Molly Klatt of A Homespun House. And I knit this in the 2022 Advent Calendar by Naughty Pine Fiber Co. And all those Advent minis. So this is a wonderful pattern that is just garter stitch knitting. It's simple, it's easy, it's cozy. It uses up stash if you have a lot of minis or leftovers in your stash. It's a great it's a great pattern for that. Um, we have gotten a lot of use out of this. I've shown this several times on the podcast, but this is whoopsie. <laughs> this is that blanket. So I knit one blanket and you know a blanket is a time consuming knit. It's not something to be entered into lightly, I feel like. So the fact that I completed one and I 
I completed it in a short period of time. This isn't a languishing whip. I have two other blankets that I'm working on that are not finished, that I started in 2023, or tw one was 2022, that are not done yet. So the fact that I started and finished this within, I think, a two-month period um, is pretty good, I feel like. Pat myself on the back. So that is my first thing that I knit. The next category category is sweaters. I knit three official sweaters. The first one that I want to show you is uh, the Monday Junior sweater, or the Monday Sweater Junior by Petite Knit. And this is knit in Swish DK yarn. And I can't remember the name of the colorway. It might be Forest Heather. And I knit this for my son last January for his birthday. And then I threw it in the dryer. And I don't know. I don't know why I did that. But now it's small and he can't wear it. I think I was testing out, you know, it's called superwash, right? You can put it in the washer. And I've done that with socks, but I never put them in the dryer. And I think had I put it in the dryer on no heat, it would have been fine. But I put it in with heat, and that's what shrunk it. Um, just to be safe, I will never put my knits in the dryer again. And actually, um, the only socks that I put in the washer now are my Patton's Croy socks that I made with Patton's Croy yarn because that yarn is very sturdy and it's a little bit, a little bit hardier than fingering weight. I feel like it's more like a sport weight. The socks that are made with that yarn I put in the washer, but everything else, I ever since I did this, I have been hand washing. So this was the first time that I, this was the first, was it the first raglan? This was the first raglan sweater that I knit. And that's that. So that was sweater number one. Sweater number two is my no frill sweater, also by Petite Knit. And this I knit in Swish DK in the color way Nutmeg Heather. And I am wearing this in a couple videos. You want to check those out where I talk more extensively about it. But this is also a raglan sweater. It's just very basic, very cozy, very neutral, something that goes with almost anything and it is definitely a staple in my wardrobe. So that is sweater number two. Sweater number three is not here with me, and that is the Felix pullover that I knit for my mom. And I was gonna try to grab it from her yesterday when we were over there so that I could show it to you in person, but I forgot. And so I'll just put a picture in here of her wearing it. But I do talk a lot about it in previous videos while I was knitting, like through the process of knitting it. So I love how it turned out. She loves how it turned out. It fits her perfectly. So I know that if I venture into knitting one for myself, again, that's the size that I will knit. I say that because I do have my version of the Felix here that I attempted first, and it only has one sleeve because I knit it in a size too small. And I do love the yarn. This is by Woolberry Fiber Co. This is the Matthew colorway from their Downton Abbey. Um, they did like a Downton Abbey release, and this is in the colorway Matthew. So I will be frogging this at some point and re-knitting it probably just as a t-shirt because I don't think I'll have enough yarn for the larger size and I still have long sleeves. So I actually knit two Felix pullovers, but only one of them is correct. <laughs> um, I also knit two hats. The first hat is this Moody Blues hat, and this is in um, yarn that I had in my stash. It is Madeline Tosh. I don't remember the colorway in uh, like a chunky yarn. And this was a pattern that I found a long time ago that I liked. And it's just, you know, a nice warm winter hat, basic hat. I like how it fits. I like the color. It's for me. 
I didn't even block it, so I probably it probably would be a little bit more slouchy and not as form fitting if I blocked it, which I might do. But I'm very pleased with how that turned out, and it just has kind of a long cuff, I guess. I don't know which brim <laughs> does have this like ribbing feature. If you can kind of see there. So um, I like that pattern a lot. And then the other hat that I knit is my Muscle Burrow hat. And this is by Isolde Teague. And I love this hat. This is in Magpie Fibers yarn in the colorway Ghost Town. And this yarn has some cashmere to it, which makes it not itchy on my head at all and very soft. And I've worn this already. I mean, it's January and I've already worn it several times this winter. So I love the top and there is a tutorial that I used with a crochet hook to get this pattern started by Natalie from Love and Stitches. I can link that below and that's how I got started on this. So if you're not familiar, this is a long tube and this is fingering weight yarn and then you just tuck the one end into the other and you have a hat. And it's very customizable. You can use different weight yarns. You can, you know, knit it longer or shorter depending if you want to fold the brim or anything like that. So it's very customizable to what your head is shaped like, what you prefer, and the yarn that you're using. So I definitely would recommend. So those are the two hats. And then I knit two cowls, which I don't have with me. Those were both gifted. One is just a garter stitch cowl that I made out of Lion Brand Woolies, and that was for my sister-in-law. I gave that to her for Christmas. And the other um, was an Italian autumn cowl by Francesca of an Italian knitter. And that was a free pattern that she put out this year, or last year, 2023. And that was made with um, Knit Picks Comfy, which is a cotton acrylic blend. And I made that for my niece. So I gave that to her for Christmas. I don't have those with me, but I enjoyed them so much that I ended up knitting a garter stitch cowl for myself afterwards. You'll see that in the next video. And then 11 pairs of socks. So most of the socks, as I said, uh, nine of them, nine pairs of socks have been gifted. I knit every year, I knit my mom and my dad a pair of socks each for their birthdays. I knit my daughter and my son each a pair for their birthdays. Um, I knit all four of those people this year socks for Christmas. I knit my aunt a pair for Christmas, my grandma a pair for Christmas, and then I knit two pair for me. I don't think I knit a pair of socks for my son for his birthday this year because that would have put me at 12. I don't think I did, so that's why it's 11. Um, the two that I knit for me are here. So the one pair is Right here, these um, actually need to be washed. <laughs> I don't remember the, it might be the New Yorker. I think it's Hugh Loco yarn and the colorway name is the New Yorker. I don't know what the stripes in the cuff are made with, um, but that was one pair that I knit for myself. And then the other pair that I knit for myself is this pair here. And this is also um, yarn from Hugh Loco. This is the colorway Emerald Fields. And this um, contrasting color is also from her in the colorway Ochre. And these were both just basic, a base, my basic recipe that I do. So it's a two by two knit cuff. It's 60 to 75 rounds for the leg, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and then 72 rounds for my foot, I wear a size nine and a half women's shoe US. So those were the two pairs of socks that I knit for myself. For my daughter's birthday, I knit these socks in the Hermione's Everyday pattern. It's a free pattern with this cute um, stitch pattern that I did for the whole leg and then the top of the foot and the heels and the toes are in Patton's Croy 
sock yarn in the colorway muslin. I do a lot of my heels and toes in that yarn because as I said, that yarn is really sturdy and it washes well. And then I had um, leftover in my stash in this colorway that I used for the cuff. And then for Christmas this year, my daughter got these socks and this was another colorway that I had in my stash. I don't remember who it's by. I think it was a Halloween colorway and I just did top to bottom all in the same yarn and she really likes these. So that was her Christmas pair. And then for my son for Christmas, I made these out of Patton's Croy yarn in gray marl and I did the heels and the toes in gentry gray from Patton's Croy and a little pop of color at the top. And then these little stripes were a leftover yarn that I had in my stash because his favorite color is green. And he opened them and he loved them so much and then he put them on and he said, Mom, I'm so sorry, but they are itchy on my feet. He's very sensitive and I thought that it wouldn't bother him because it was on his feet and that's kind of how I am. Like it bothers me everywhere else, but my feet, it doesn't bother me, but it still was itchy for him. He tried a second time, um, like a week later and he's like, mom, I just can't wear them. So I got a third pair of socks for myself, but that also means like I want him to have another pair. So I'm going to have to find some hand dyed yarn. It's a little bit softer and more gentle for his toes. <laughs> so that is everything that I knit in 2023. I also learned so much. With the Felix pullover, I learned sizing, right? So when I'm reading a pattern, I don't swatch, and I know that that is a big no-no for some people, but I'm not going to start swatching. I feel like the, my gauge is not the issue my idea of how much positive ease I want in a garment was skewed. I now know I need more than two inches of positive ease. So to be for it to be comfortable, I like to wear sweatshirts. I like to be cozy. I need at least six inches of positive ease to feel comfortable because as a tight knitter, it's probably going to be a little bit less than that. But if I, measure myself and I give myself less than six inches of positive ease, it's going to be too confining for me. It's going to fit too close to my body. I'm not going to feel comfortable. I'm going to be pulling on it all the time. So now that I know myself and how I knit and how I like my things to fit, I think that I will be better in the coming year at gauging how, what size to knit without <laughs> knitting a gauge swatch. I know you, some of you probably think I'm a little crazy for not doing that, but I, I just don't want to spend the time. It's not time well spent for me. I have other things in my life that I need to do. Um, and you might say, oh, well, look, Nicole, you knit a whole sweater and now you have to rip it out. What about that? all the time you spent doing that? You're not wrong. Just in general, I feel very comfortable with a raglan pattern now. With the Monday Sweater Junior, I for the first time did a folded collar and that was something new that I learned. So that was exciting. That was the first time that I did a raglan sweater. The only other sweater that I had knit prior to that in 2022 was The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. So this was my first raglan. So then after this pattern, I was able to knit the No Frills pattern. And I think in the No Frills pattern, they called for German short rows, which was the first time that I had done German short rows. And I learned because I did wrap and turns with the Weekender, I learned that I actually prefer the German short rows and I feel like they were neater and tidier for me. But also I learned when it comes to short rows that I actually do need them in a pattern because I did knit a knitted tee, which is here, which I didn't count in this list because I'm going to have to rip it out. And um, just for your reference, this Felix, I didn't count either. It's not part of my 19. This was a knitted tee that I knit, and I am going to have to rip it out as well because I did not include short rows and short row shaping, and I do not like the way that it fit. I also learned that anytime I'm going to knit a garment, I need to include, if the pattern doesn't include it, I'm going to need to learn how to include short row shaping or only choose patterns that have it because I definitely 
need it or I'm not going to like the garment and the way that it fits on me. So that was another learning, <laughs> a learning process. What else did I learn? I did try my hand at color work this year. I don't have a finished object to show you. I only knit one sock of each attempt that I did. And a lot of people helped me out saying that if you're knitting in a small circumference to turn it inside out to knit color work and your tension will be a little bit better. So um, in the new year, I would like to try my hands at a garment. I have a sweater picked out and yarn picked out. So I will hopefully venture into that this year. I also learned to weave in my ends as I go. In this pair of socks that I knit for myself, there is already a hole forming and it hasn't even been a year and I haven't worn them that much. Right there. And it's because you can see the end that I weaved is right here where I snipped it. And I don't think I was weaving in my ends properly. I also have a pair of scrappy socks that I knit the previous year and I weaved in my ends all at the end and the way that I weaved them in, I have the same type of hole happening in those. So I actually emailed Kay from A Crazy Sock Lady and asked her how to weave in the ends. And she actually has a tutorial for this on her channel that I watched. And then um, also Steve, Steven, um, everybody knows him. It's called the Weave in Steven Method. Um, I looked up his and which is very similar to hers and so I started doing that the end of December into this month and it is a game changer I <laughs> I'm weaving all the ends in as I go and it is making such a huge difference so that was for me a huge thing that I learned so that my knits don't fall apart on me when I'm trying to wear them the last thing that I learned in 2024 is about monogamy and my knitting I tend to be a little bit scatterbrained. Um, part of my creative process is just thinking of all these different things at one time. And I do better when I hone in and focus on one thing. This is also why minimalism plays such a huge role in my life because it does not come naturally to me to focus on one thing. I am constantly brainstorming new ideas and doing several things at once, reading many books at one time. And it just seems when I do things this way, I, I don't get anything done in a good amount of time. I might at the end of whatever time period it is have many things done, but it, I feel like it's better just to concentrate on one thing at a time, finish it, and then move on. So for 2024, I want to try to do more of that. I'm not saying that I'm not going to be knitting on more than one thing at a time, but I think in the past I've seen someone or heard or watched a podcast where someone said they allow themselves to knit one sock, one um, other accessory, like a shawl, something a little bit bigger, and one garment, ha and just have those three things going at one time. So I don't knit a lot of shawls, but I think if I have one garment going and one pair of socks going at a time, I'm just taking it down to two things, then I should just keep it at that. So I cannot cast on a new pair of socks if I'm not finished with the first one. And if I'm working on a garment, I cannot cast on another garment. I can cast on another pair of socks if I finish the first, but really you can only knit on one thing at a time anyway. The only reason that I'm going to allow myself to cast on two things is because garments aren't always very portable. And so if I'm going somewhere where I want to be a little bit more discreet about my knitting, I want to have something small like a pair of socks to work on. So I'm going to work on focusing on, you know, one or two things at a time, being a little bit more monogamous, um, being a little bit more organized with my knitting and being a little better at keeping up with things in my journal. That's what I knit. That's what I learned. I hope you guys had a great 2023 and I am so excited about what is coming in 2024. And I've been brainstorming like for the past week, I've been brainstorming about some new things that I want to bring to this channel. I hope that you guys are as excited when you hear about them as I am about implementing them. I'm not going to be doing less knitting, um, but I am going to be adding in some other things that I think 
I just need to do for me. I need to get them out into this creative avenue, but also I think you'll enjoy them too. So I will see you in a couple weeks. Happy knitting, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.